Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to the Cooklin channel. I'm David and welcome to the kitchen. If it's your first time here, welcome. And if you've been here before, take your shoes off and stay a while. You know where everything is, especially the dog. He's out back making noise. So, it is New Year's Eve and this is a special holiday edition. I'm going to rush this episode out for you tomorrow so by the time you're seeing this, I can tell you with all honesty, Happy New Year! <laughs> so, Happy New Year, Happy 2020. Hope all is well. Hope uh, 2020 sees you with, uh, with everything you need and everything you want and everything you desire. Uh, health, strength, wealth, uh, family, fun, and especially a lot of food. Um, we're here getting ready to be, uh, you know, doing what we do, cooking in Brooklyn. And um, if you look around, you can see a lot of clues on what we're gonna be doing today. Um, we've got quite a few ingredients, and then if you look in the back, I got a big old pot bubbling away. So today we're gonna to be making a uh, seafood boil. Sometimes you call it a, uh, a low country boil. Uh, when we went to Louisiana, uh, to New Orleans, they said it was a ball. And we were like, a what? A ball. <laughs> we were like, ah, uh, come again? Maybe you can spell it or something because I don't know what you talk about, lady. So it is a, uh, a seafood boil. Uh, we've got a gang of stuff here and we're going to be cooking in Brooklyn. I'll be right back and uh, Happy New Year. It's a seafood boil. So, first thing you gotta do is boil. What are we gonna boil? Water. Um, get the biggest pot you can muster, the biggest pot you can find. And um, I got a big pot. I don't even know how many gallons this is. It's, it's quite a few. It's large. Um, so, we got ta da, water boiling. You know, I gotta get it cracking for you guys early. So, I got the water boiling here. And Seafood boil is pretty simple. It's like just basically throwing stuff in a pot. This is the easiest thing you can do. Do not be intimidated by this. It's literally throwing stuff in a pot. There's no measurements here. It's just kind of what you feel, what you have, what ingredients you have, and then making it tasty. That's the bottom line. So the first thing we got to do is kind of get this water seasoned because it's a lot of water. And, you know, in order to get a lot of seafood and stuff like that flavorful, you got to season the water. you got to get it seasoned. So the first thing we're going to do is get some sausage. So I got one kid that doesn't eat pork. So I got chicken sausage. And it's a smoked sausage. Uh, it's not andouille, which I would love. Um, but it's a smoked sausage that's very flavorful. I, I picked that sausage purposely instead of like a turkey sausage. And I'm just going to get these as close to the water as possible, drop them in so I don't burn myself. Um, I could use a tool, and I should use a tool, but I'm an idiot. So <laughs> I'm not an idiot. I'm adventurous. So we're just going to cut these sausages. Some of them are cut up on the bias, and just chunks, whatever size you think you you would like. Um, if you have guests, whatever size your guests would like, um, just get them down to whatever size you want. And the first thing you're gonna do is just get those down into your pot. And the saltiness um, of the sausage and the seasoning in the sausage is gonna flavor that water right up for you. And um, it has a little bit of fat, you know, so that's going to lend flavor also. And um, that uh, the texture difference with the sausage and the seafood is what people really enjoy because you have the seafood, it's, you know, it's very soft and, you know, you kind of kind of need a break from a little shrimp and this and this. You kind of need a break so that the salty 
goodness and you know and I like the porky goodness when you have the real sausage um, kind of breaks up the monotony gives you something else to um, chew on and also it is flavor for your neighbor right so we're flavoring up this pot with some sausage and then we just cover it up and then we move on to the next ingredient your favorite seafood seasoning Old Bay is the old standard so we're gonna get some Old Bay in there and again there's no measurement no science in here I'm gonna dump most of the Old Bay that I have right in there this is a brand new one so let me just get some in there and I'll have some later if I need it, if I need to do something so get some Old Bay in there I've got some Creole seasoning that low country boy is gonna be good with this Creole seasoning it's you know a lot of the same stuff that's gonna be in the Old Bay plus a little bit extra so we got some Creole seasoning in there I'll toss two of these peppers in there because why not I got a gang of garlic here you know I can't cook without garlic right and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rough chop them just a bit because you know if you put these garlic in their hole they're not gonna put no flavor in the pot I'm gonna smash a few the more oh, I made mess the more you manipulate garlic, the more of the, uh, the compounds uh, are activated and the more flavor that it's going to give you. Because you can take a garlic clove, let me show you this here. Take a garlic clove, pop it in your mouth. You don't taste nothing. You barely taste any garlic, right? Right? Pause that because I'm not doing nothing. Like that. All right? You grab a garlic clove, bite it. Pure garlic. Woo! Hot. Oh boy. So, this is the lesson on garlic. The more you break the bonds, the more garlic gives you flavor. So, before you use garlic whole, like an idiot, break it up. Get some flavor in your stuff. Garlic. Got some bay leaves. we flavoring this pot up. Flavor. Oh, I don't have to go far for this one. Some whole peppercorns. Toss some of the whole ones in there. Then I'm going to break some of these up. And I'm going to get you some broken up peppercorns because the same principle exists. Suck on a peppercorn all you want. I ain't going to do that. But um, when you break it up, it releases the flavor. So we're flavoring this pot. Some salt. I measured it, it's about a half, it's a half a cup of salt. I measured it. Some garlic powder. We're gonna reinforce the garlic flavor. The garlic, the granulated garlic is, it's fortified. It gives you more garlicky flavor. You know what I mean? So, it's a good half a cup of that too. What would some Cajun food be without some hot sauce? Oh boy! Let me measure this. A few, uh, a few, uh, dabs of hot sauce. Let's check out this pot. It's starting to look flavory already. We got one big old onion. We had the onion, we had the garlic, and now we gotta get the paprika. Remember that group, that dude from back in the days? The paprika, <laughs> onion, garlic, who oh boy. That was a Cajun chef, man, y'all know nothing. I'm loaded up with lemon. What seafood without lemon? So I'm gonna juice for this big old pot. I'm gonna juice three lemons. Uno, dos, tres. You gonna leave the uh, the whole lemon in there with the with the uh, with the peel and everything? I don't really like the flavor that it picks up. Not for this. So just gonna get rid of these peels. You got three lemons in there. The juice of three lemons. Some oregano from the garden. What else goes good with seafood? Butter. I'm gonna just drop a stick of butter in here. Because why not? We've got layers going on. You know seafood. If you know seafood, it tastes. I got butter in my fingers, that was a good snap, but it takes that long to cook. So, the other stuff that we got to get in there, because we got the sausage going, so the other stuff that we got to get in there is some potatoes, and 
I didn't feel like hashing them with the potatoes today, cutting them and all this other stuff. So I got these little mini potatoes, little baby potatoes. So I'm just gonna dump these right in, right? And get those going. They're gonna take a few minutes to cook, maybe mm, 10 minutes or so to get them good and soft. And then I'm gonna just go in there with this corn. So I got the corn, dropped one. <laughs> Why? So I got this corn and I cut it into these little rounds just so that they're easy to, uh, to manipulate and easy to handle when you get it on your plate. You don't want to be dealing with a whole corn cob, right? So we got these little jump balls here and right in. I'm trying not to splash and give myself a Cajun facial, right? So all this is in the pool, and come on in, come on in. Look at how flavor, uh, I'll eat it now. Uh, I swear to God, I'll eat it right now. Come play with me. All right, so we got butter, we've got sausage, we've got pepper, we've got corn, we've got potatoes. So the bulk of the work is done. Um, I'm going to cover this up again. We're going to let this go for about another 10 minutes. It's not a hard thing to do, but it does take time to build flavor to make sure everything is cooked properly. Um, so we're going to let this go so that the, the, the corn and the potatoes get soft and, you know, good to eat. And then the rest of the stuff is seafood, so, you know, that's going to take only a couple minutes a piece to cook, but we're going to add them layers. Okie dokie, everything's been boiling away, getting all delishy in there. So, time to start adding our seafood. So, we're going to start one uh, one thing at a time because everything is cold, frozen, cold or very cold or frozen. So as soon as it hits the water, it's going to do what? Drop the temperature. So what we're going to do is add everything one at a time, let the temperature come back up to boiling, and then add the next one, right? So we're going to go in with these crawfish right now. And they're all in. Just give them a little stir. And immediately you see the water stop bubbling because that cold, that cold stuff went in there. So what we're gonna do is get it insulated again, back up to boiling, and then we're gonna put on, uh, we're gonna put the next uh, seafood. Okay, our crawfish is back up to a boil. And this starts happening real fast. I mean, once we got all everything starting to combine, um, everything takes off like you know, like a rocket. So we're just gonna get this shrimp in here. We got a few pounds of shrimp, whatever size. This is raw shrimp, and they're deveined and peeled already. So it makes it a little bit easier, a little, a little bit easier to manage. It's starting to look tasty. Look at that, tasty, tasty, right? Let's see what's going on at the bottom. The potatoes, right? that corn at? Oh, I can't even find it. It's in there somewhere. There goes the corn. Ah, tasty. So, again, we're going to bring this back up to a boil. Just cover it up and let it go. Um, in order to cut the time, here's a little, uh, a little thing you can do. Some of the things that you can defrost, put it in some, some cool water, not hot, not warm. Put it in some cool water while you're doing all this stuff. So it'll cut some of the, the time uh, a little bit. So I defrosted the shrimp a little bit um, in a bunch of water, just so it's not take it's not something frozen going inside. Something uh, a little bit closer to room temperature. So I, I defrosted those a little bit while we're waiting for the crawfish. And it just takes a couple seconds for um, for most seafood. A couple minutes, I should say. It takes a couple minutes for most seafood to uh, to defrost in some. Uh, I would say. Uh, room temperature to cool water, a little bit of salt that'll help to cut the ice. Not too much because you know you've got a lot of um, 
flavor in here already. But if you do salt it to, uh, if you put extra salt in the water to, uh, to reduce the, the, the thawing time, make sure to rinse it off thoroughly before you add it to your stuff, all right? Back to a boil. Back up to a boil again. And it's just a few minutes in between adding each uh, seafood um, to get it back to the boil because you just want to make sure everything gets thorough tension. You know what I mean? So the last thing we're going to add here is our crab leg clusters. Crab leg clusters. Say that three times fast. And we're getting them right down in there. And that is what you call delicious. So I'm going to put these in and I think that'll be enough for us to save these for tomorrow because we'll have some tomorrow we can add to the boil. We can boil again. We add some more to the boil tomorrow so that we have some a little bit fresh so it won't be too overcooked and rubbery by tomorrow if we leave everything in. So, oh. Put the lid back. Boil. Okie dokie. Some of that Cajun facial. Mm. Smells absolutely incredible. Everything is combined and delicious. Yeah. Let me get some of the spot. Come on, take a look at that. What's better than this? We got a little bit of everything in there, right? So, now that everything is done and combined and delicious, you can cut your fire off and get ready to enjoy. You just you can strain this off, get the the, the, the newspaper, put it, throw everything on the table if you want, or you know just come and grab some from the pot, get a nice bowl, get a nice big plate or something like that, you know. Definitely family style, definitely go in and, and it's very uh, interactive. Go in and grab what you can, go back and get seconds, go back and get thirds, whatever it's gonna be. But this is gonna be delicious for our New Year's Eve into New Year. We're gonna be eating this into New Year, that's where this is, this is about 11 o'clock now. We'll be cooking for a while, but you know, we're gonna be up celebrating New Year's. how it goes. Hey, hello. Dog whistle? I think it's a dog whistle. So we're going to be celebrating in about 40 minutes or so. We're going to be eating well into that. Thanks for watching the Cooklin channel. Uh, it's been a phenomenal year and um, I'm looking forward to bigger and better things. I'm looking forward to you coming back. Tell a friend to tell a friend and don't forget to subscribe. Real easy down below, and happy 2020, happy new year, and that's it, we out.